Hey guys, so today is a clear night. We got the full moon. Actually, it's a one day before the full moon. And I wanted to test um, the Takahashi. This is gonna be my first test on Saturn. Saturn is right there between the trees. Let me see if I can, right there. So this is gonna be my first time observing Saturn. Uh, it's almost 1 a.m., but because it's Friday night, uh, I can stay up a little later. So let's uh, first, uh, I might have to raise it a little bit more and uh, let's get to it. Okay guys, so we are going to start with a 24 millimeter, uh, super wide. And I'm just using my Vixen Super Polaris mount, which is probably more than enough for a four inch refractor. First time Saturn this year. And uh, I let the Takahashi cool for about uh, 20 minutes. It's not super long, but should be enough for a four inch, even though it's a triplet. I don't have a finder scope, but let's just take a look. Normally I can find these things pretty fast. Oh, there we go, found it. So that's pretty easy. I need to focus. So first I want to uh, explain to you guys what I see or how I see it first, and then I'll try to put the eyepiece to the, the telescope. Now for you guys that didn't watch, uh, that other video, I upgraded the original Takahashi focuser to this dual speed uh, Antares uh, focus. Now the, the actual focus itself, focuser, let me show you guys. This actual focus part uh, is actually much smaller. The, I believe the original Takahashi one is like this big. So I do need an extension tube here. Because even with like a four and a half inch travel or five inch travel, it's still I can't come focus. I think what they've done, the Takahashi, this actual tube length is actually a little short. If they would have made this a little longer, like four inches, then almost any focuser would work. But anyway, since this is a small focus comparing to the original one, uh, I do need this extension tube here. But anyway, let's uh, get to it. Let me tell you what I see. So this is gonna be a low power. Oh, there we go. Saturn's at the very top. Let me get it in the center. You can just see its rings, but way too tiny for me to really see any detail. So let's bump up the power. Okay, I'm gonna really bump it up a lot to like a 6.7 ultra wide, 4,000. Uh, Japan series so it's a really good eyepiece and this will get me close oh there it's, it's still in the field of view now I bet you if this was an altazimuth mount probably wouldn't be in the field of view anymore still when you jump up that kind of power I don't know if I gave it exactly the perfect cool down time I can see Titan the ring is like just practically edge on so what power are we at so for my book here, um, Takahashi 102, the 6.7, 122 power. Oh, that's it. Okay, we gotta go much higher. Okay, I'm gonna take out the 6.7 and put the 4.7 ultra wide 4000. And this will get us 174 power. Now, remember too, if this is 102 millimeters, you times it by two, and you should get a maximum theoretical power of 204. So I'm kind of approaching it, but I know with the Takahashi, if it's cooled, if it's uh, a good scene or the atmosphere is not turbulent, we can always go above it a lot more, but let's take it one step at a time. I do see a Titan on the right, uh, side or depending if you have a mirrored diagonal or a prism diagonal or 45 degree but in my view here it's right along the plane of the ring it's fairly bright okay let me boost up the power again 
I think what I'll do is I'll put the 6.7 with a two times triplet Barlow, and I believe that gets us 244 power. Now, remember too, I'm also taking into consideration that uh, Saturn is not at its prime time. It hasn't reached what we call opposition, which is its like closest approach to Earth. You know, it's a good image, but I don't think it's a great image. With the rings being flat, you know, you're not looking at the, the, the ring itself. You're not looking at the Cassini division. That means there's a, it's almost like two rings uh, type of thing where you're separating them. So there's no way to see that right now. And sometimes when it's at its closest approach, and depending what telescope and if I let it cool down enough, you could actually see some detail on Saturn. Now, the light of the flash is a little bit bothering me, but uh, maybe I'll turn it off, view for a second, and then maybe then I'll try to show you guys. How does that sound? That way I can get a good look at it. You can see it moving pretty fast, so that's the real movement of it. Anyway, guys, I think that's the best I can do for today on my cell phone. It's not really great. Maybe next time I need to use my EQ6. Okay, I was able to add my Barlow. Two times Barlow, but it's really fine. Okay, guys, I will see you next time. I guess maybe uh, this is why you need to let the planet rise higher up um, type of thing and or you don't get the best view. Uh, the eyepiece view was much better than the cell phone view. But uh, again, maybe it, it wasn't enough cool down time. Maybe it needs to rise a little bit higher. Like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. If you guys know anybody getting into the hobby, share my channel. If you guys are on the forums, and maybe someone's asked uh, about uh, something that I have. If you'd like to share it, I do have members video where once a month I put a video just for the members. It doesn't go to the regular channel. Let me close the door. And if you'd like to join, you can. If you, you don't have to, if you can't afford it or if you don't want to, you can help out the channel. It's only 99 cents and I put your name also in the descriptions. Why not you? Why not me?